right, ladies and gentlemen, we're here today to go over uh, cigars 101 and 102. We have some newer folks here at Best Cigar Prices, and with all of our employees, we try to cover the basics with them going over cigars 101 and 102. So without further ado, let's jump right into uh, cigars 101. We're going to talk about um, sales um, of cigars across the United States. We're going to talk about what makes a cigar a cigar. We're going to talk about premium versus long filler. We're going to talk about tobacco growing regions in the United States and uh, abroad. We're going to talk about the anatomy of a cigar. And then finally, we have a glossary of terms. So, something, uh, page three. We talk about tobacco sales in the, in the United States. This, this comes from uh, a fellow by the name of Rene, who is the president of Villager Cigars. And we were talking about the, the pure market size that there is for, for tobacco products in the United States, all right? There were 12 billion, with a B, cigars made in the United States, or for the United States, okay? 12 billion sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. Okay. But to make it real simple, of that 12 billion tobacco product cigars that were manufactured in the United States, okay, only 5% of that total number was premium hand-rolled cigars. The other 95% were machine-made type cigars, and we're going to go over all that. But then when you take the total market, Okay, which is, again, there's a lot of tobacco being made in the United States, but only that much is what we basically do here every day. Okay, so it's a very limited market that we're in. Of that being said, of the 340-plus million cigars that were made in the United States, 65% are being sold through the Internet and the catalogs that are out there in the, in the United States. 10% uh, are coming through other channels, whether it's a convenience store or something like that. Um, and then the other 25% uh, is uh, tobacco shops. You know, like we look around, like we're building up front here, you know, like a pub where we're gonna be selling out of there as well, okay? So the idea of this whole thing is, is that, yeah, there are a lot of tobacco products being made in the United States but when you look at it, only 5% are, less than 5% are premium cigars. Okay, any questions on that? So, let's talk about what makes a cigar a cigar. So, when you're looking at a cigar like this, all right, the very top of it, there's actually a cap that's put on the top of this. I'm gonna pass this around so you can take a look at it, but you'll see there's a little line right there and that's the actual cap they put on the cigar. So the cap and then the whole part of this is actually the head, all right? The body is pretty much self-explanatory. It's the body of the cigar, but then you got a foot, which is the bottom of the cigar, okay? So there's no secrets or you know anything that's, that's weird or anything like that, but just remember that because it may be on a test later. I'm just throwing that out there, okay? So you've got the cap, which is a loose piece of tobacco that just put on the top of the cigar. You got the head, okay, which is basically the whole part that goes in your mouth. The foot is the part that you light, and the body is the main part of the cigar, okay? So that's what makes a, a cigar a cigar, all right? If you don't have all those parts, then technically it's not a cigar, okay? Now, what is a cigar made out of? Well, in order to be a cigar, you have to have three components of a cigar, okay? The part that you see on the outside is the wrapper of the cigar, okay? Then right underneath the wrapper, you have what is a binder, okay? And the binder is what holds all the filler together, okay? And those are the leaves that are in the middle of the cigar, okay? So you've got wrapper, binder, filler, all right? Now, a couple things. The wrapper is usually the nicest, prettiest leaf because that's what you see, okay? Usually you don't see spots on it. It's usually shiny and oily and it's nice looking, okay? Because you want that, when you're gonna buy a cigar, you wanna look and go, oh yeah, look, that thing looks nice, okay? 
when you have uh, you know a premium cigar, so it's nice and shiny and oily, and it's got a you know uh, a nice sheen to the wrapper. Usually, it's not a lot super veiny. Um, it's a it's a better wrapper that you see to the front, and these are usually more expensive. You want to take a guess how much a, a good wrapper leaf is a pound? Forty, fifty, sixty dollars a pound for wrapper leaf. Okay. Um, any questions on that? So now we know the parts of a cigar, and we know what makes up up a cigar. And let's get into premium versus machine made, and talk about some costing and stuff like that. So. There are several types of cigars, okay? You got your premium cigars, you got your machine-made cigars, and then you also have in machine-made cigars, you also have short filler or mixed filler cigars, all right? So let's talk about these two big, vast differences in things and, and how they come about. We try to sell and offer thousands and thousands of premium cigars. Okay, what makes it premium? Well, when you look at a cigar, when you break it apart and you get to the inside of a cigar, okay, you got your your wrapper, like I said, is on the outside and it's all pretty and nice and everything else and it looks great, okay, and it's a very thin uh, product. But there's a wrapper leaf, okay. Then you got your binder on the inside, and this is what kind of holds everything together. Some guy, uh, some manufacturers have two binders. Some have three binders, but you got a binder because that's what's kind of holding this entire this entire thing together. If you smell that, it's got a little bit of sweetness to it. All right, then you got your filler. Okay, and this is basically what makes up a cigar. Okay, now this is a premium cigar because if you look. All the filler in there is all long leaves okay there's not little chunks and little pieces and stuff like that now when you pass that around what do you smell you tell me because I think it smells sweet yeah 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 so usually what that means yeah. is is that it's it's been fermented properly and yeah. by that during the fermentation process it gets rid of all the impurities but the biggest impurities is ammonia, okay? Ammonia is what makes a cigar stink when you're lighting. You're like, oh, a cigar stink. Okay, usually that's because you're burn, burning ammonia. And burning ammonia isn't, isn't good. But a premium long filler cigar doesn't have all the little bits and pieces to the inside of it, okay? So you got your wrapper, you got your binder, and you got your filler, okay? And that's on a premium cigar. Now let's talk about um, let's talk about a mixed fill or short fill cigar. Again, you're gonna have get the cap off of this thing. You're gonna have a wrapper that may not be as pretty as that wrapper is. Okay, but it's still nice. It's still shiny. It's still oily. Okay, and it just you can feel how fragile that is. You know, you squeeze that thing, you're gonna you're gonna break it into a lot of pieces. Then you got your binder. And of course this one is dry and difficult to remove. Well the binder will not is not being cooperative on this one. But here's what I want to show you with this. Take this binder off. Now, when you look inside this particular cigar, okay, you're going to see little bits and pieces mixed in there, okay? Um, this is a mixed filler cigar, okay? It looks like there's, there's pieces of tobacco, okay? But it actually smells pretty good. All right, you'll see that there's not, like this one has the nice long pieces, that one's got little chunks in it, okay? And basically, when they make a cigar, they cut the ends of it off and they always have scraps left over, okay? Doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad tobacco, okay? Because it was probably going in a cigar like this, but you gotta reuse that tobacco, okay? And one of the cool things about being 
um, an internet company is we kind of drive down the costs of cigars because we're buying that scrap tobacco and we're selling little bundles of, of mixed filled cigars to people. If, they, if the manufacturer couldn't sell that to somebody, it would make their premium cigars even more expensive. So we get to you know, kind of help the market out, so to speak, by buying, and, and again, there's mixed fill, um, short fill, not necessarily a bad thing because it's good tobacco, okay? But sometimes you have issues with the burn and stuff like that, but we'll get into that here in a little bit. Now, with all that being said, um, there are a lot of machine-made cigars in this world. Ooh, that was dry, okay? And if you look inside a machine-made cigar, okay, you're going to see... Um, the tobacco is kind of what you're used to seeing in um, cigarettes, okay? You know, pass that around. That's got a little fragrance to it, but pass that around. That's actually a flavored um, cigar. But you can see the, the difference in the tobacco. And then the last one is almost, um, almost like a cigarette, all right? They're calling these uh, cigars because they actually have a binder wrapper and filler in them. But when you look down and set number one, the wrapper on this is homogenized. It's not a natural leaf wrapper. Okay, it's like it's it's basically paper. <coughs> Bless you. Vanilla gotcha. But if you look inside this, this is typically what you see inside of a cigarette. But you got binder, you got wrapper, and you got filler. But that is super cut up. All right, so let me uh, let me straighten this thing up here a little bit. These things are out of control. So there's a huge difference between premium. There's a huge difference between machine mates. You can just throw that right in. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, do you see do you see the difference? Okay. The the scrappy tobacco. Okay, sometimes goes in our mixed fill or short fill cigars, and the premium long filler tobacco tends to go in. So these cigars tend to be uh, more expensive, all right, because they have the, the premium, the long leaves in it. When you get down to the scrap tobacco of this kind of stuff right here, okay, this tends to be the, the less expensive, okay, stuff. And it tends to be, like I said, a, a mixture of different tobaccos and things like that. Okay. Any questions on that? And you guys working in the back seat, bundles going out the door all day long, you know, and that's that, that mixed stuff. But, you know, this the, you could still get a, a bundle of cigars for like $20, $25, $30, $35, $40, dollars, depending on who makes it and the tobacco and so on associated with it. Most of the premium stuff, you know, you're looking at $100 plus or thereabouts for, for a box of cigars. All right. So do you see the differences? Everybody good with that? Any questions on that? There may be a quiz later on that, so you might want to be paying attention. All right, let me get rid of, uh, I'm going to keep that there for a second, because we're going to talk about actual uh, tobacco growing regions. So, we buy cigars from all over the place, okay? But primarily, most of the tobacco and the cigars come from three different places, okay? You got Honduras, all right, you got the uh, Nicaragua, and you got the Dominican Republic. Right, most of the cigars that we have come from these three places. But also keep in mind that tobacco is also grown in the United States. Okay, Specifically, right here in Pennsylvania, we grow uh, Pennsylvania broadleaf tobacco. We don't grow it, but it's being grown. Some of our cigars actually carry Pennsylvania tobacco in it. And it's interesting because you think about all these cigars are being imported into the United States. Okay, and we're, Most of them come through Florida, but... They get imported in the United States, and all that tobacco, we're actually exporting tobacco to other countries for them to use, like the Pennsylvania Broadleaf, or up in the Hudson Valley, the New York area, up that way, the Connecticut Valley. A lot of tobacco is grown up there, and it's big shade tobacco. Yeah, so in the United States, you know, what you hear, of, or what you may hear, like down in the, the Carolinas, tobacco is grown but it's a different strain of tobacco. It's called burley tobacco, and they use that mostly for, for cigarettes, okay, and sometimes pipe tobacco, stuff like that, okay? But 
Honduras, Nicaragua, Dominican Republic are the three primary growing areas and cigar producing areas. I would I would hazard to say that probably ninety plus percent of all the cigars that we have come from Honduras, Nicaragua, or Dominican Republic. Okay, there are a few, you know, like like J C Newman is one of the few companies that are left that actually make cigars in the U.S. and they make a lot of machine-made cigars down in uh, Tampa area. Okay, they're the Trader Jacks and they're the factory throwouts and we sell a ton of that stuff, but those are where those guys come from. Okay, any questions on that? All right, let's get into tobacco a little bit. I'm not going to go super crazy, super deep with you guys and gals, but um, understand, number one, a tobacco seed, first of all, um, everybody is interested or has questions about Cuba. Okay, well, Cuba, Cuban cigars, Cuba tobacco, Cuba, 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 Cuba. Uh, once upon a time, uh, without getting in all political and everything like that, uh, there were a lot of people that, that grew tobacco and made cigars in Cuba, okay? Um, Castro took over, basically took all the, the factories, took all the fields and said, they're the governments now, all right? So, a lot of the people that worked there obviously didn't like that, okay? And they said, we're out of here. And oddly enough, these folks settled in areas like Honduras, Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, okay? It's basically the same microclimate throughout that area. Now, what they did was they left with not a lot, okay? But they did take seeds with them, okay? Because a seed for a tobacco plant is about the size of a pinhead. And if you look on there, you can see a dime, and you see those are all tobacco seeds with it, okay? So you could leave with a bag of seeds, and you had enough to plant fields of tobacco. So these folks skedaddled, took their seeds with them, and ended up, like I said, going to Honduras, Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, and, and starting over again, not basically, but they had to start over again. So a lot of these folks are you know, family traditions for years and years they've been doing this, you know, ever since they, they left Cuba. You know, and you see names like Padron, Perdomo, Placencia, you know, these folks have been doing it from, they, they got out of Cuba and they've settled into, you know, Honduras, Nicaragua, and the Dominican Republic areas, and they've gone through generations now of, of growers and, and cigar makers and things like that, okay? Um, so, Basically, if you were to decide, you know what, I want to grow tobacco, all right, you need to have a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of patience because first you start with the little seeds, okay, and you take those seeds and basically you, you, get, a, you, you get a greenhouse, all right, you take those seeds and you plant them in the little trays like you get at Home Depot when you're starting to grow your own little plants, okay, and usually what happens is they put two, three, four seeds per little pod, all right? And then by hand, they, they water all this stuff. And then by hand, they watch the three or four seedlings come up out of there, right? And then what they do is they go through each of those pods and they pick out the most durable or the strongest looking one. And basically the other ones are, are you know, survival of the fittest. So you're going through and you're picking each one of those pods. And if you look, this is just a tiny example of one greenhouse that there was probably 20 greenhouses lined up in a row when I took this picture, wow. okay? <clears throat> to give you an idea of the, the millions of plants and, you know, the, the craftsmanship and taking your time and going through and picking, going, this one, not so big, you're out, you're not so big, oh, you look like you're gonna be the, the, the best one. And then those get, once they get to be about six inches tall, they get taken out to the field and they, and they get planted out in the field, okay? And then, we talk about the field just for, you know, the soil that, that the plants go into. You want to ha try to have a level of consistency. You want your cigars to try to taste the same. You know, whether I light up a, a Macanudo today, it should taste the same as it did yesterday and it should taste the same tomorrow and two weeks from now and two years from now or six years ago. And to do that, you have to try to have a consistent soil, okay? Because you can't, there's certain things you can't control. Like you can't control how sunny is it gonna be this year, okay? Or during this growing season, or how much rain am I gonna get this year? 
But one thing you can control is your soil. You take your soil, you take it to the local university and you have it tested, okay? How much nitrogen, how much potassium, how, you know, how much uh, nutrients are in there, okay? And then I can go through and go, okay, every year I try to have this baseline in my soil. So maybe I have to add potassium this year. Maybe I have to add a little nitrogen to the soil this year. But every year it's a little bit different because you're getting different yields out of the fields, okay? Any questions on any of that? So uh, again, we plow the fields, we plant it, um, we water it if need be. A lot of a lot of people have irrigation built into it. Um, there's also people that do shade grown versus sun grown, which I think I'm going to get into here. But anyway, let's talk about now what happens. Plant starts growing. So a tobacco plant can be anywhere from about four or five foot tall all the way up to, to 12 foot tall, all right? But what's interesting is most of them have uh, leaves in pairs from anywhere from 14 to 22 different leaves that go up the plant, okay? And they call those uh, primates that go up and down, all right? Now, there are different parts of a tobacco plant that give you different parts of, of a cigar, and that's kind of why I left some of this sitting out here, okay? Because um, when you look at a plant, they call and this is in Spanish, so you have to bear with it a little bit, but the bottom of the plant is volado, all right? And that, I've seen people take that and basically cut those leaves off and put them right back into the ground and use them as fertilizer, okay? Um, I've seen some people put them in cigars, but for the most part, about 5% of that part of the plant gets used for cigars, okay? Seiko, Viso, and Lijero are what make up the majority of, of cigars, okay? Seiko is next up on the plant, Viso is in the middle of the plant, and the top of the plant is Lijero, okay? Now, if you think about a plant growing, all right, plants grow towards the sun. They go up towards the sun, okay? Even if they're shade grown, they're still going to grow up and they're going to grow towards the sun, all right? Lijero is the top part of the plant, all right? That tends to get the nutrients sucked up to it, okay? So Lijero tends to be um, the fullest, richest, strongest part of the plant, okay? And usually when you ferment it, like you can look through this and you see this dark tobacco that's in here. I would bet that that is um, a leaf of Lijero, okay? has a lot more nicotine to it, okay? It's a, it's a definitely stronger, and it has, like I said, the nutrients. But all, part, all parts of the plant play a role in the cigar itself, okay? The Seiko, the Viso are used for, for burning properties, a little bit of taste, okay? The Lijero, like I said, gives it that, that, that kick, that punch to it, okay? Um, are there any questions on any of that? And if you look here, there's these different primings. You'll some people will advertise like, oh, this is from the fifth priming, this is from the fourth priming. You know, as long as it tastes good to you, that's what matters. You know? Questions. So tobacco grows. All right. Um, then it gets processed. So we have it out in the field, then we start to harvest it. After about a month or so, um, we start taking tobacco out of the field. Um, it is mostly done by hand. It's not, there's not a lot of machines going through, although there are different ways of, of harvesting tobacco. There's some people that stock cut it, which means they go out and they just whack the whole plant and they take the entire thing and they take it to a curing barn, hang it upside down. Um, but Suffice it to say, tobacco is harvested, then it goes uh, and it's cured. It goes to a curing barn. They take the tobacco, they hang it up in a, in a curing barn, and um, we've had a few people in the building that have actually had the opportunity to go to a curing barn. When that tobacco is hanging up there, it goes up there and it's green and it's hanging, and they have fires going in the curing barn because they're trying to get the process moving along. If you walk into a curing barn, let me tell you, it'll get your attention. It's it's ammonia. It's like, you know, it's like, wow. I mean, it's strong, you know, when you go into a curing barn. But 
Tobacco's cured, all right, um, and then it gets into, just real quick, it gets into fermentation. Basically, the tobacco is stacked on top of each other. It's watered. It's uh, burlap sacks thrown over the top of it, and it gets fermented. That's where they get rid of the rest of the impurities that are in the tobacco. Some people ferment their tobacco once. Some people ferment it twice. Some people ferment it three times, four times. You know, it, it just depends on the manufacturer. It depends on, on the process. It depends on what they want to do with it, how long they want to do it, and what taste and what they're looking for. Okay, so everybody's a little bit different, all right? Once it gets fermented, um, the leaves get stripped out. Sometimes they're put into a little machine that strips them out, or it's done by hand. Just whip them, and, and then you get your leaves. You have two leaves. You have a left side and a right side. It's like a Twix bar. <laughs> All right, so um, next, leaves get sorted um, by size, by type, whether it's Lijero, Seiko, Viso, and then... Um, let me back up a little bit. The the cigars, there's recipes that people know. Like, I need this much Lijero, this much Seiko, this much Viso. I have this Lijero comes from this place in Nicaragua. This comes from this place in Honduras. I get a little bit of that Pennsylvania Broadleaf. They know what the recipes are. So the people that actually roll the cigars work in, in pairs. All right. So in the mornings, most of them come in and they get handed tobacco. And they say, here's your tobacco, and they know what the recipe is. These people roll day in and day out the same cigars, the same sizes over and over and over. So they know, okay, I need I need a leaf of this. Okay, I'm going to put this in here. I do this, I do this, I do this. So when they work in pairs, um, there's a person that makes the bunches called the bunchero, okay, and they make the bunches of the tobacco, which is basically the, uh, the guts of the cigar, all right, and then another person puts the wrapper on the cigar. And I think I cover this throughout here, but um, maybe I do, maybe I don't. Maybe I missed it somewhere. Anyway, that is the story of, of the cigars. Once they're made, they get put in molds. Um, they get pushed down so that they are uniform in size. Then um, they make one more stop, and it can be anywhere from... Um, a month or two to years, they go to an aging room and they sit and they get to marry together. Okay, I've seen in factories cigars that have been sitting in the aging room for 10, 15, 20 wow. years. Okay, so you talk about you know not making any money. I mean, if you're holding on to cigars for years, now obviously, when you sell those cigars, you could say, Well, these have been aged for 10, 15 years, they're super great. and you know, you can make, you know, obviously a little bit more money with those, you know, and like, for example, I've been to the Fuente factory numerous occasions, and I've gone into their aging rooms, and I see that Opus X that's been sitting there for 15 years, you know, 10 years, 12 years, 20 years. It's just amazing, the smells, and, and but, you know, they're just aging them. Nope, not ready yet, you know, and that's up to each individual company or, or cigar master to go, all right, these have, these have sat the appropriate amount of time. They smoke them, they try them, they, you know, they touch them. You know, they say that the tobacco speaks to them. And they go, okay, these are ready to go. Once they're ready to go, they go get cellophane, they get put into nice boxes, they get the beautiful labels put on them, and then they get shipped to us, okay? There are any questions on And by the way, just to, as a side note, um, again, I've had the, the fortune of going to every country and seeing just about every factory there is. But when you look at the actual boxes that the cigars come in. You know, most of us take it for granted. We're just, you know, moving boxes because we're, these are going out the door to customers. You know, we're moving, moving, moving. If you stop and take a look at these boxes, they're amazing. They're all done by hand. You know, the, the dovetail, the sanding of these cigars, they're painted, they're dried, they're, you know, they're all, take, you don't understand it until you actually start to look at these boxes up close and you go, wow. You know, there's a lot of care and consideration that goes into just the boxes that the cigars go into. So imagine if you see, you know, a beautiful box like that, the care, you know, over 300 pairs of hands touch that tobacco before it actually gets to us, you know. And you're talking about, you know, potentially years from the time it goes from a seed to the time it gets in a box and comes to, to, our, to our door, all right. So, again, it's a very detailed and a very processed thing that we're dealing with here. 
very artisanal. Okay, it's very interesting. It's almost like wine in a way. Okay, questions? Any questions about the, the process? So the longer they age, the less, uh, the less ammonia. Yeah, right? yeah, and, and again, it's up to, you know, again, every manufacturer goes, you know, the longer they age, all right, the more stuff they give off, like essential oils. You could take cigars, like I have cigars that are 15, 20 years old in my humidor at home. And when you pull that cellophane off, they're brown. And that's from all the oils, the essential oils that are in a cigar, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, it makes them mellower, okay, because they, they're losing some of their goodies, so to speak. Okay, but some people really like a nice, well-aged cigar because it's nice and mellow and it still has good flavor to it, good taste to it, okay? But when they're putting them all in, in wheels of say uh, 50 or 100 cigars and putting them in a room, the oils are, are you know kind of mixing in with, with all the other tobacco that's in there, all the other cigars that are in that wheel. So, you know, it, again, it's 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 all about individual or all about different taste. You know, what I like may not be what you like, may not be what she likes, what he likes. You know, she might like a different size cigar. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's all about personal preference. And when we get into Cigar 102, we'll talk about other things that are preference. You know, like, I like to cut my cigar this way. Well, I like to cut it this way. I like to light it this way. There's, it's all about what you enjoy and what you like, okay? And it's about what you like to taste. It isn't about, like, try this because you're going to love it, okay? There's, oh, okay, well, I'll try it. No, I really didn't love it. Well, until you ask questions and do experimentations and try different things, you really don't know where you're at in, in the world of cigars, so to speak, all right? So, with all that being said, I just mentioned cigar shapes and sizes and stuff like that. Um, cigars come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Um, Parejo is the most common, and Parejo means straight-sided. Okay, there's, if you look at the cigar, it's Parejo because the sides are straight on it. Okay, there's not a lot of uh, angles okay to it there's not like a point on it or a, a point at the bottom or anything like that that's parejo torpedo um, tends to have a tapered head uh, to a point uh, bellicosos are shorter and rounder with a tapered head pyramids uh, gradual taper from the head to the foot okay and figurados have tapers on on both ends and that also includes the adamas but for our purposes the most common Cigars are Robusto, Churchill, Toro. Okay, those are the most common shapes that, that are out there. All right. Now, with that with that being said, Robustos. Um, before I before I get into that, have you heard people say like that's a five by fifty four, or that's a six by sixty, or that's a seven by forty eight? Okay. Do you know what those numbers actually mean when they say that? Length and then. Uh, yeah, and what's the, how's the ring gauge expressed? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, the number of a ring gauge, like what is, like I say, if I say it's a six by 64. So 64 would be the ring gauge. Yeah, right. but yeah. it's actually expressed in 64 of an inch. Of an inch, okay. Yeah, All right, okay. so if you have a six by 64, that's actually six inches by one inch, because okay. it's a 64. I'm not good at math, but here's what I can tell you. A six by uh, a six by thirty two is half an inch. Okay. All right, so you got a half an inch in the diameter of the cigar. If you get a six by sixty four, then it's it's a full inch, inch right. all the way around. Okay, um, a robusto typically, you know, there there's all sorts of, of different, you know, there, you can have short robustos, you can you know you can have all, but. Typically, it's around four and a half to a little over five inches, and it's usually around 48 to 52 in the ring gauge, okay? This is actually a Toro I got in my hand right here. So they're a little bit bigger, usually around six inches, usually 50, a little bit fatter, 52, 54, okay? Then Churchill's tend to be a little bit longer, you know, usually around seven inches or so, and those usually are 50 to 54 in, in the ring gauge as well. So. The only thing to take away from that is, you know, a lot of people, especially in the call center, you know, they, they go, what's well, a seven by 50, 
and they don't understand what that 50 is. They may figure out that the seven is actually inches. Right. Okay, but the 50 is expressed in 60 fourths of an inch. Okay. So it's 50 60 fourths. Yeah. All right, any questions on any of that? There's a little chart on here to show you all the different types, and that's not all of them, believe me, that's just a representation of the different cigars. Um, just real quick, going through and wrapping up here, uh, wrappers. Uh, there are a lot of different wrappers. They can go from super green, okay, all the way to jet black, and all stops in between, okay? And there are all these different names for them, okay? They tend to call the super green ones, like a Candela or a Jade or a Double Claro, all the way down to the jet black ones, which are oscuro, okay, which means like dark in Spanish, all right? So you get a lot. Of, uh, of different shades and a lot of different tastes. And speaking of tastes, um, and wait, you work in shipping, you probably have seen this go out from time to time. Mm -hmm. Whenever we get a new customer who comes on board with us, we send them, you know, basically tips on cigars. And I don't know if you, you folks have seen it, but we have a little welcome, you know, basically cigars 101, welcome to cigars, how to cut a cigar, how to light a cigar, and, and how to taste a cigar. And that, this last thing on here is just the flavor wheel. These, this is not encompassing of every possible flavor there is because there are a lot of different flavors out there, but these give you the, the general gist of, of the flavors that a person can experience depending on what the cigar is that they smoke, okay? And these are, again, natural flavors. These aren't the ones that, you know, a cigar that's infused or a cigar that is, uh, sprayed with, you know, like if it says like, oh, that's a, a, a vanilla or a chocolate or something like that, you know, and it's pure, like, you know, it's been <coughs> imparted by a human to it. Um, that's different than smoking something that's pure tobacco. And go, it has a, you know, I get a, a sense of, of like chocolate or cacao or something like that to it, okay? Are there any questions? So it's just a useful little tool if you're starting out and you're not really sure what you're tasting, away you go. And then at the end, we have a, a glossary of terms for uh, different cigars, okay? Now, with all that being said, any questions on cigars 101? Is there any specific uh, part of the plant that's used for the wrapper only, <coughs> or the binder, or the, I know you said that each had a recipe, a mm -hmm. specific recipe. I know. I didn't know if one was more they're all it all varies and it's all up to the, to, to the manufacturer and it's also how it looks they get through and they ferment it and, and they look at it and they go well these things look really good these are our better looking leaves we're going to use these for the wrappers okay yeah. um the binder tends to be a thicker leaf so it's a little bit lower okay and then the filler can be a mix of all the above all right okay. good question all right moving on how are we for time Keep going? Okay. Um, we're going to breeze through Cigar 102, okay? We're going to talk about, briefly, um, different cigars, uh, the di or different cutters, different lighters, things of that nature. Um, Mr. Bonomo down there, can you p hand me one of the cigars out of that box right there, please? Yeah. Okay, just throw it down there. Probably not the way you should handle cigars, just throwing them, but that's okay. So, again, we talked about it earlier, and I'm going to say it again. It's up to <clears throat> individuals um, how they like their cigar, how they, how they cut their cigar. But I just want to show you folks, there are a variety of ways to cut a cigar, all right? Variety number one is a punch cut, okay? This is just a typical punch cutter right here, all right? And what this does is this gives you... A little core okay you're taking this you're putting it to the top of this all right you're wiggling it in here all right and you're taking out a little piece of uh, of the you're pouring out a little piece of the, of the tobacco there's there's a variety of reasons why somebody may want to use a uh, a punch some people like the roundness of it the other thing is is it really concentrates that smoke down to one hole not a huge, okay? So some people might like the concentrated smoke, but again, it's up to each individual. Everybody's a little bit different, okay? 
So you got your, your punch. Now let's go through, let's talk about uh, a V cut or a cat's eye. This one kind of gives you the best of, of all the worlds. Okay, you see that right there? It's got that little V in there, and it looks like almost like a cat's eye. All right, when you cut a cigar, you get that, now you go to this. All right, now you've taken that V and put it right here. Now you get the best of both worlds a little bit. You get the roundness of the cigar, but now you're getting more space in there to get more smoke out of it if you, if you want. Again, totally subjective. It's up to each individual person what they want, what they like. And then last and probably the most common is the guillotine. Okay, you got single guillotines, you get double guillotines. Most people are familiar with, with the guillotine cutter. And that you take, you want to cut an eighth of an inch off of the cigar. You want to basically cut that cap that we talked about that we put on the top. If you cut a cigar down too far, okay, what's going to happen is it's going to unravel. Okay, because we talked about that wrapper going on the cigar. So when you cut way down here, the wrapper tends to come off of this, except for this one. Oh, there it goes. All right. You start to lose the wrapper on it, okay, and it unravels on you. All right. So, again, it's personal preference. People want to be fancy, and they want to have a nice pair of scissors, okay? There's tabletop cutters like this, okay, where you can put your cigar in here and go, oh, I'm going to cut it this way, okay? Or I'm going to put the... Uh, the V cut in it. There's there's so many different ways to cut a cigar. It's all about what you like. Okay, it's what you prefer. All right. Um, quick tip though, if you ever have a cutter like this and you're not sure what an eighth of an inch is, all right. If you put the cigar down on a table, okay, and close it that way, it's going to take off that eighth of an inch for you. So if you're never sure, you're like, oh, I'm not really, you know, I'm right, we'll just put it on the table. Boom. There you go. Any questions on that? Nothing. Moving on. So if you want a if you want a uh, if you want a more potent draw on a cigar, a cat's eye is a punch cutter cat's punch eye. Cutter, but yeah. when you're doing like I'm sitting here talking with you guys, right, and, and I got a full if you tend to let the cigar go out, then as you're smoking it and if you have a concentrated little hole, yeah, initially you're getting I'm getting all this good smoke. Oh, this is great. But if your cigar goes out, all that tar and everything that you've been pulling up is going to be concentrated now at that hole. And if that cigar goes out and you go back and light it, it tends to be bitter because you pulled it all into one little concentrated yeah. spot. Yeah, so once you do that, you want to keep probably keep it going. Yeah. Unless you like bitter. You know, again, who knows? Everybody's different. All right, moving on. There are a huge variety of different types of lighters that you can have. You can have a single flame, double flame, triple flame, quad flame. You can have massive torches that are desktop. You can have, you know, uh, lighters that, that, are, that fit right in your pocket. This one I've got here that I'm using today is a quad four, okay? It's up to each individual person, but I will tell you a few things, things that make sense, right? I would say well over half of cigar smokers light up their cigar with a torch. Okay, they get it, they get their torch, they light it up, you know, they try to get a nice red cherry on it burning and then they light their cigar. Okay. But a lot of people prefer to use a softer flame. Okay. Uh oh, there it goes. A softer flame because you're not when you burn that initial at the beginning, okay, you get a little bit of that, that burnt taste to it. But if you use a softer flame, okay, it's not as harsh on that initial pull as you're pulling through the through the cigar. Okay. But again, it's up to each individual person. All right. There are people that take cedar spills. Where's my cedar? Where's my cedar? Here it is. So inside some cigar boxes you get this happens to be from, from a Drew Estate box. You get these little pieces of cedar, okay? You can take this, all right, and then get it going and light your cigar, all right? A lot of nicer establishments will offer you um, cedar spills to, to actually go ahead and light your cigars. And we didn't get into it, but most of the boxes that come from these countries are actually cedar lined. 
Okay, cigars love cedar. They're like best friends, all right? And it keeps the bugs away, and it's, it's a much better thing for holds your humidity and so forth. So, um, again, no right or wrong way to do it. There are, like I said, a huge variety of, of lighters that are out there. Now, uh, one quick tip, and this is mostly for, um, I use this for a lot of folks that work in the call center, but you get a lighter, okay? Um, the problem with lighters in general is a lot of people think that, well, my lighter, it's no good, okay? The problem nine times out of 10 is, is that you don't know how to properly take care of a lighter, all right? So those of you that, that have lighters like this, look, you can use bleeding tools, you can, I use a pen, all right? You bleed this out because there's no air left in it, all right? Then you get yourself a butane. And here's the thing about butane. You, there's all different types of butanes out there. If you look for that uh, butane, it's like 99.99% pure, almost zero impurities, okay? We sell them all day long. There's different brands, but you want almost zero impurities because it's not going to gunk up your lighter. All right? You get your lighter, you fill it up. And we could talk all day long about filling up a lighter. You can't light it right away because the butane's super cold and it takes a minute or two or three to get, get it going. Okay. The other thing that most people don't think about is they don't bleed it every time they do it, and they should. Um, using premium butane is, is key. There's stuff that starts with an R and ends with an N um, that I've seen in um, stores, you know, uh, convenience stores. And it's maybe a different color, maybe yellow, but if you look at it, um, you're like, oh, it's butane. But if you look at the, the percentage of butane that it is, it's not 99.99999% pure. You put it in there and Next thing you know, your lighter's gunked up, and once you gunk it, it's really hard to, to get it clean. Then the other tip is, a lot of times when you're lighting a cigar, if you think about it, all right, I'm over here lighting this cigar, and as I'm lighting it, maybe some of the ash is falling down in here. So you wanna get a can of air and blow that thing out, okay? And you'll get, now that I've now that I've frozen it with the canned air, look how good, how clean it gets or burning on that. You can hear it, you know, it just sounds good. So, purging it every time you fill it is great, and then using canned air from time to time to clean it off is great, and then you should have a lighter that's functional. And that wasn't functioning a second ago, and now we got a lighter that's going well. Okay, all four flames are going and it's great. Okay? So that's your that's your pro tip of the day. All right, questions. Um, I'm just gonna blow through this real quick. Um, we talked about choosing the flame, okay? Um, how you taste a cigar is is up to each individual person, but there's a thing, there's a process called retrohaling, okay, where you actually take the smoke. You never inhale a cigar, obviously, but You take it, it's almost like swallowing it, but you bring it out through your nose. And when people are like, oh, it's spicy, it's peppery. It, when you take a, a cigar that's peppery and you bring it through your nose, you'll know it's peppery. You're like, oh, yeah, I see what you're talking about. Your eyes will start to water. So, but to really taste it, you want to, you know, let that smoke swirl around in your mouth a little bit, a little retrohale, just to really taste what the person is making, you know, trying, the cigar manufacturer trying to tell you something, you know? They've gone through and they've tried all these different blends and they're, you know, smoking and tasting and going, you know, this I really, really enjoy and I want others to enjoy it. How you enjoy it is, is subjective, okay? You, you might love this and you might hate this and it, and it could be from the same manufacturer, it could be different manufacturers. You know, again, it's what you like, it's what you enjoy, that's what's important about cigars, okay? Any questions on that? What you, what you drink with it? There are people that drink uh, sodas, Coca-Colas, with, with their cigars. There are other people that drink scotch. There are other people that drink whiskey. There are other people that drink wine. Who's right? Nobody. They're all right. 
If you like it, go for it. If you don't like it, don't do it. Okay? Any questions? Moving on. Um, I Humidors. There are a bunch of different types of humidors that are out there. Okay? You've got your smaller, you know, travel type humidors. These tend to be plastic. They hold a few cigars in them. And this is basically for, you know, a trip, something quick. You want to throw them in here. You want to go. Um, if you are so inclined, this isn't really a humidor, but if you're going out on the town for a night, you put want to put two, three cigars in a holder, you put them in here, and that basically keeps you from damaging the foot of the cigar. Put them in a pocket, put them in a purse, put them wherever you want to put them. You know, you get a little cigar carrier like that. Um, then you have humidors that you're used to seeing, like a desktop humidor. Okay. Now, this is just my opinion. I may, may, may or may not be correct, but if you have a glass top humidor, it's kind of neat because you can say, oh, look, I can see my cigars. All right. But if you think about, you're trying to keep humidity trapped in a place. Okay. You want your cigars to be basically around 70 degrees and about 70% humidity. You want it to be almost like a little tropical island in there because that's where most of your cigars came from. Okay. So, a couple things. If you have a glass surface like this, all right, the odds of a leak happening are greatly increased because you have all, if this was a solid piece of wood, it's not going to leak. All right? But again, it's what I like. I don't care what you like. Well, okay, great. Um, but when you're choosing a humidor, okay, a couple things you want to look for. When you drop this glass or drop this lid down, you shouldn't hear a straight bang. Okay? The seal on here, when you drop this, okay, you're, you're, put your hand over it for a sec. Feel this whoosh of air. Okay, that means that there's there's a bit of a seal to it. And when you put, you know, when you, you know, we, we can talk about seasoning humidors and stuff like that, but as this thing absorbs more wood, it's going to be even, you know, slower drop. Okay, or you're not going to have that, you're going to feel more of a whoosh on it. Or if you're somewhere, you know, in a, in a store or something like that, and you're not really sure, if you take a dollar bill and put it in here and pull it out, if it's got a good seal, it'll kind of roll up a little bit. If it doesn't have a good seal, you're just going to pull out straight down the head. Okay? So, again, up to the individual, um, what they like. Let me tell you, probably one of the best things that we have, and some of you have seen this here, well, most everybody has seen here, because Lord knows this is by far our number one selling item that we have. We do, we have these transmitting bags. For like three dollars, a customer can protect their cigars. You, this bag is thick; it's reusable over and over again. And we put a little water pillow in there. That water pillow will last, depending, you know, a month, two months. You could buy a little box of cigars, or you could buy a gift, or if you're traveling, you can take the cigars, put them in this bag with the with the uh, the transmitter, zip it up, put it in your suitcase, and you can go and take it with you. You can fit a lot of cigars in these bags. Okay. Other things to look at too when you're talking about humidity, like just make sure if it's something quick and easy, you want to get like a little boveda pack and throw it in your humidor, throw it in your transmitter bag, throw it wherever. It's going to keep your cigars nice and fresh. All right. And a lot of people, like I said, they spend you know good money obviously on on cigars. You want to make sure that you're protecting them and keeping them fresh. All right. So you can use, like I said, humidification packs. You want to use distilled water, not tap water. Okay. Um, if you use tap water, a lot of times you're going to start to see your, your stuff turn green, okay, and that's mold, and you don't want that on your cigars. Um, we sell the Cigar Swami, the PG solution, okay. It has, it's odorless, colorless, tasteless, and it holds humidity, okay. And then, of course, the transmitter bag. Any questions on any of that so far? Real quick, people sometimes ask, should I put, should I leave my cello on, take my cello off? Uh, when I'm storing cigars or putting them in a humidor, I would suggest you keep them on, okay? And there's a lot of reasons why. Like, if you're if you're just going to throw a couple cigars in your pocket real quick, um, you don't want to damage the foot on it, so that that uh, cellophane holds it on there. And plus, it's cool if you're aging cigars and you pull that cello off and it's a nice amber color or a nice brown color. It's like, wow, look how long I've been aging this cigar, okay? Um, flavored versus non-flavored, you definitely want to keep them separated. Even if you have to take your flavored cigars and put them in a piece of Tupperware, okay, uh, with a good seal on it, and throw a couple of these in there, you don't want to mix the flavors because they will marry, 
okay? And you may have a, a premium cigar, and all of a sudden you put it in there with something that's infused or, or something, yeah. and then all you're like, hmm, boy, this tastes funny, okay? This didn't taste like it, like it should, okay? Um, so keep them separated. And then last, just real quick, ashtrays. Um, use what you like, all right? What doesn't work for cigars, though, is usually cigarette ashtray. They got a little smaller lip on it. Okay, it's hard to, you can't really fit your cigar in there. But cigar ashtrays that are designed for cigars are bigger like that. You can have single, double, I've seen massive ones that, you know, you can put 10 cigars around it if you get 10 people smoking. So again, it's up to each individual what they want, okay? So I believe that concludes our quick overview of 101, 102. Are there any questions? So if anything, what you need to take away from this is the fact, a couple of things. One, what we do is kind of, it's very artistic, okay? We don't, you know, we're not out there selling cigarettes, obviously, we don't sell cigarettes. The machine made part of the business is, is a small part of what we do, but we're out here with premium cigars, okay? Um, they're not something that you can just call up and go, give me a premium cigar. You know, call a manufacturer and have them make it today. It doesn't work that way, okay? It is, it is a process, and it takes a long time from the time you put that seed in the ground to the time you make the box and put those cigars in the box and then you ship them over to us, okay? So we get a lot of customers go, how come you're out of that? You know, that's your own brand. You should always have it. We have to order stuff a year in advance and go, listen, we want, you know, first quarter this and second quarter this and third quarter this. Sometimes we miss it. Sometimes they miss it. They may have a bad crop one year. Hey, I don't have the tobacco, sorry. Okay? Um, and again, the last thing about this whole thing is, is that do what you like, all right? If you like to smoke, you know, I look silly sometimes smoking like a small cigar because I'm kind of a big guy, okay? So when, if I have a big cigar, it kind of fits me, all right? Um, but who knows? I mean, I've seen little guys smoke big cigars and, you know, big guys smoke little cigars. It's what you like. It's what, what suits your preference and suits your taste, okay? Any questions? No? All right. That wraps it up then. Wrap it.